we're going to talk a little bit about these guidelines in the writing process. I'm going to give you a little, I don't know, if some people learn a little bit better when they hear it. So I'm going to talk about this and tell you what you need to do for your uh, portfolio. Okay, so in this unit, we're going to talk about how you start writing, how you use your ideas, and because you're going to have a lot of freedom in this class to choose your own ideas and to choose your own topics. I want you to choose things that are interesting to you. So start thinking of ideas. I'm going to give you topics and prompts for you to say, hey, what's an idea you have for this topic? Um, you know, and we'll get there when we get there, but you'll be able to choose what you would like to write about. Once you've decided what ideas and what you'd like to write about, then you have to get your, your facts right. Okay. As far as journalism is concerned, right? The facts are the deal. And you'll hear people criticize the media and stuff like that all the time because they're biased a lot of times. Finding impartial or people who aren't trying to sway you one set way to the other, one way or the other, that's the key. That's what we're trying to do here. So when you gather your material, think to yourself, what are the facts? Try to separate your opinions about those facts from the actual evidence you're looking at. Then sometimes, and some if you're writing an editorial piece or if you want to have a slant or an angle or try to sway your audience, you can do that sometimes. So try to think about what's my stance on this? Do I have an angle for the story? Am I trying to make my audience think a certain way? Once you have those ideas and you've decided who you're writing for, you're writing for little kids, are you writing for adults, things like that, then you'll write your first draft. Always read through it once you're done writing it. But if you, this is the kind of thing that I'll always help you with. You can revise it yourself or you can get some help from me. Okay, so these are some things you really want to be watching out for. First of all, make sure your facts are right. Don't start just throwing things out there and you know, guessing or say, oh, I saw this on TikTok or I saw this reel on Facebook or something like that. Check your facts. Make sure they're right. Okay. Also make sure you know who you're talking to. If you're talking to little kids and you want to write an article for young, a younger audience, you'll choose your words differently. If you're writing for teens or adults, of course, you would use a little bit higher speech. Voice is a really important part too, because that tells us, you know, how casual you're being, how formal you're being. And so you want to make sure that you are not using words like I or you. You're trying to avoid those. So instead of saying, I think all dogs are better than cats, you would take the I think part completely out of that and just say dogs are better than cats. Make your statements as though they're facts if you are trying to take a stance on something. Don't say I think or I believe. Also try to avoid things like you should really get a dog instead of a cat. Instead of saying that as a writer, we could say everyone should get a dog instead of a cat. Okay, so keep these I, we, and you. Try to keep them completely out of your articles if you can. And that's what I'm saying. Objectivity will be another thing. Sometimes you need to present just the facts, and sometimes you'll be allowed to put some opinion in. So objectivity means keep your personal opinions kind of out of it if you can. Do your best. This is the thing that's the hardest, I think, for a lot of people. And make it easy to read. Make sure if you're telling a story or giving facts that they make sense in the order that you're putting them in. Obviously, be sure to include details. Details are what are going to drive your point home. They're going to make your, your audience able to like interact with your story a little better, especially if you're bringing up an important point like um, you know, suicide prevention, which is super serious. And of course, we would be really important of what details, where could someone go? How could they get help if that was the thing you were trying to do, right? Give as many details as you can. And of course, quotations, if you're talking about an event that occurred, using quotations are really will help it drive it home and give your story validity. You won't always be using quotations, uh, but you might want to at some point. Okay, so a really big deal for this unit is understanding the difference between a primary source and a secondary source. So let's say there's a car accident and I happen to witness it and I'm on the scene. I saw the accident. I saw the paramedics come. I saw people get rescued. I witnessed it. If somebody interviews me about that car accident, I'm a primary source. I saw it with my own two eyes. History books are secondary sources because Nobody who's still alive was alive when George Washington was alive. Nobody was there and spoke to George Washington and knows what he did. So the only people who can be a primary source are people who were actually there who have primary. They were the first people. They were there. They witnessed it. They saw it. 
everything else is a secondary source. So like if you read something in a newspaper and then tell some about, someone about it, you're a secondary source. You read what the primary source said, you know, here's the car accident. Mrs. Kinlock witnessed da 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 da. Mrs. Kinlock said this. Mrs. Kinlock said that. And then you read it and you tell your friend, you say, oh my gosh, Mrs. Kinlock was, witnessed this car accident. Well, Mrs. Kinlock's the primary source, but you as the teller, the reteller of the story, you're the secondary source. So anyone who's retelling it, after reading the primary sources information is a secondary source. Now, if I view the accident and then I tell about it in the newspaper and I'm a primary source and you're a secondary source because you read it in the newspaper and you tell your friend, if your friend goes and tells someone else, they're a tertiary source. You see each step goes first source, second source, third source, fourth. So the further you get away from a primary source, the less reliable the information is going to be. Okay, and I just want to make sure that you understand what the difference between a primary source and a secondary source is. Okay, now passive and active voice, this is another thing that we're going to look at throughout the semester. Passive voice is what we would do when we're writing about labs, like in science. We say, like, the beaker was filled. Well, who filled the beaker? We don't know. Passive voice kind of is very vague who was doing it. So if you look at this example A, it says plans were made by the senior class, but it's like, yeah, that comes second, see? And so when the person doing it comes after what the verb is, that's how we know that this is passive voice. Okay, so like the council voted, this is active voice. See how the subject comes before the verb? In the end, the project was delayed because of the rain. So the rain is the thing that delayed the project, but look, the delayed comes before the cause. You see, and so it's a little bit tough to for some people to kind of distinguish between passive and active voice. But I'll tell you what, it's pretty easy when you see subject, verb. When you see it like that, you know it's always active voice. Okay, the mayor held. That's active voice. The project was delayed is passive voice. Plans were made. And you see the use of that verb was, were. That also is an indicator that you have passive voice. Okay, and then those are some other resources you can look at. Okay, and so now you're going to write your portfolio. So all you have to do for this is you just have to tell me, and you don't have to do five steps, okay? So you don't have to do exact five steps if you don't want, but if you'd like to stay organized, what does it take to write a good article? So based on what I just said, you can summarize it. You can go back and look at the points if you want to look at your lesson notes. But the idea of what I want you to know, there's no length requirement. I want you to show me that you understand what I just said and kind of what, where you should be thinking, where your mind should be as you're beginning to approach this news writing process. All right. So like I said, no length requirement. Just make sure you have good content in what you write and explain to me what it takes to write a good article based on what I just said and what you read in this unit.